I see patients with cataracts all the time. All it is is a natural clouding of the lens, which helps us to focus and see. As the cloudiness worsens, light has a difficult time passing through and the vision begins to suffer. At first, the cataract simply changes the refraction. Updating the glasses prescription on an annual basis is sufficient. Eventually, that is not enough and people start becoming symptomatic. But what are those symptoms? Maybe Mr. Seymour can enlighten us. It's a beautiful day in Central Florida. If you have a medical question that makes you go, huh? Just ask it now. Just ask it now. Don't save it for later. So, Mr. Seymour, what seems to be troubling you? I'm having all sorts of trouble driving. Why is that? I think it's my Cadillac. You mean cataract? Yeah, Cadillac. Cataract. Cadillac. Okay, whatever. Mm hmm, 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 huh? Ah! Phew. Guess he did mean Cadillac. Well, I suppose that wasn't too helpful. When patients ask me, when will it be time for cataract surgery? I usually say, they will know. The reason why it's vague is that the symptoms differ for each person depending on their activities of daily living, as well as the type and severity of the cataract. For instance, most people would feel driving is an important skill, especially for maintaining independence, but not everyone cares about following their golf ball in the air after they've hit it. People involved in the arts often complain about a lack of color and brightness. In general, the most common complaints or difficulty with nighttime driving due to headlights, difficulty with daytime driving due to missing signs, having a hard time watching TV, especially the news or sports, because of a small ticker at the bottom of the screen, having a hard time reading, especially in dim light, is an issue as well. The vision problems that cataracts cause tend to be constant and not so much fluctuating, though some situations may be more symptomatic than others. Fluctuating vision suggests something more transient like dry eyes. I mentioned that the type of cataract also plays a role. The most common type, nuclear cataracts, occur when the center or nucleus of the crystalline lens starts to become yellow. This causes most of your usual symptoms like decreased brightness, color, difficulty with vision and nighttime driving, etc. due to glare and halos. Cortical cataracts occur when there are peripheral opacities that are usually wedge-shaped like pieces of pizza or better yet, pie. The, these peripheral defects are usually more bothersome when it's dark out and the pupil dilates to let in light. That uncovers the cloudiness and causes significant problems with nighttime glare. In contrast, posterior subcapsular cataracts are central and on the back surface of the lens. They are often seen in diabetics and people on chronic steroids, as well as my younger cataract patients. These are more symptomatic in the daytime when the pupil is small and the person cannot look around the central opacity. They may present with more daytime glare and difficulty reading. With regards to insurance coverage for cataracts, carriers usually look for a best corrected visual acuity of 2040 or 2050. Alternatively, if the vision worsens to 2040 under glare testing, where we shine the light and try to simulate nighttime driving, then it is also acceptable. Still, I've always preferred using a patient's specific complaints as my biggest reason for doing cataract surgery because as I like to say, we treat people and not numbers. Thanks for joining us at Dr. Raja's Neighborhood. Join us next time and I'll make sure we leave the light on for you.